Hello, welcome to Spartan Life Radio. It is a Sunday afternoon. I'm your host, Cheryl Wilkerson. Thankful that you could join me on this Sunday afternoon. I understand you could be doing other things, so I do not, I do not take you for granted. I think we have a pretty good show lined up for you today. I want you to sit back, get your tea, get your water, whatever, and just enjoy. Up first, we have Mr. Rodney Malone. Rodney Malone, he's all about town, but today he's come by to tell us about something that's going on that you can take part of. It's pretty exciting. Rodney Malone, of course, is the director of Crescent Counseling and Casework Services right here in Hampton Roads, and he's out in the community. He's doing some good things. So welcome to the program, Rodney. Hello, Cheryl. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing fantastic. Good. We love fantastic. So first, let's go back. Before we go forward, let's go back backwards. Explain to us what Crescent Counseling is and how it works. Okay, so basically, um, I was a therapist and a counselor for the city of Norfolk between 2008 to 2022. I'm sorry, 2002 Mm -hmm. to 2021. I take that back. I'm getting my dates mixed up. Getting old. I actually, <laughs> yeah, I actually started in 98 with oh, the wow. city of Norfolk, and I worked in the detention center, and I did uh, different different positions, and I, I basically worked my way up to administrator um, uh, at, at, you know, for juvenile services. Plus, mm-hmm. I worked in the courts for probably 10 years. So um, in 2008, I branched out and started my own counseling agency and uh we've been we've been rolling since 2008 here uh actually my office is located on rosemont road i have an office in roanoke as well um and we do counseling services for families in the uh deserving 757 area and deserving 540 area um with seven cities here Mm-hmm. And we pre- and we we provide intensive in home services, which are services for um, kids from four to twenty one, basically. And we do uh, mental health skill building uh, services for adults. Um, it's basically independent living, helping people uh, balance their checkbook, live independently. You know, outside of a an acute care facility. But what and, got you um, interested in all we, of that? What, where did the love or the passion to help people in this capacity, where, what was that born from? Well, once again, it, I think it, it's all relevant. It derives from being social in sports. Okay. Uh, I think, you know, being around people all the time and uh, teamwork and, you know, if you notice, like a lot of, lot of the big rave now is like, you know, let's just do team building and stuff like that. It all de- derives from team sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is this is my philosophy now, but I just I just think that that all derives from team sports. And as you know, as you grow older, and and if you stick with those type of sports, and then when I went to college, came to Old Dominion. Um, and, and did my that. undergrad. I did that in sociology <laughs> and criminal justice, and then I did my master's in counseling at Norfolk State. So uh, it was just one of those things where I, you know, I was I felt like I had a grip on um, the curriculum, and I, it interested me uh, in so many ways to help people. So you know, that's that's kind of like where that passion came from. So you were at. Old Dominion playing basketball and being the counselor off off the court. You were the person that everybody came to talk to. <laughs> yeah, probably. I just didn't get paid for it <laughs> with my teammates. <laughs> right, <laughs> but I'm yeah. sure you 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 know they would come to you. Whatever that that would fuel your passion to help, and that's leading you to where you are today, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. That's interesting. That's pretty interesting. And so what would you say to people that are listening? There might be some young people listening, and they might say, oh, I might, I thought about doing that. That might be interesting. What advice would you have for them? Well, um, I would say if that's, you know, if your passion is helping people, helping children, helping uh, older adults, and, 
you know, you have that passion, then, you know, uh, you basically you can volunteer um, at, you know, social services. You can volunteer with your local churches, you know, get out in the community. Um, you know, you do need degrees, you know, but they have grandfathered uh, people in who have, you know, now the counseling uh agencies um that overlook the counseling you can you can basically get a qmhpt which is qualified mental health professional training and you 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 know you you join a you kind of go to an agency and say hey this is you know what i want to do and you know um you, you they do you know they do the basic background check and stuff like that and uh and then you know you can kind of join join in and and get to work. You know, Rodney, what are you seeing going on so much these days with children when they come in? What, what what's going on with the family life that is stressing children out or making children anxious or what's the main trending problem? That doesn't sound right to say it like that, but you know what I'm asking you. What do you see so much of when it comes to our our students today? Um, I see, uh, to be honest with you, it, it really all starts in the home. I, I believe and, that. Yeah. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a family dynamic, you know? Um, and one of the, one of the main things, you know, Piaget always talked about the hierarchy of needs. And one of those things is food and shelter. Mm-hmm. So if you have, you know, you, you can't really expect kids to perform well in school and at home if they're worried about trying to find something to eat right? or trying to have shelter. Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, and, and then, you, you, then you need discipline with parents to kind of uh, put them in the realm of uh, or the position where they, you know, can succeed. Um, and that would be with education, uh, you know, like this, the, the basic needs, you know. Um, although the education is one of the things that I see kids are lacking in and, you know, COVID didn't really help much. Right. Um, these kids are, they're behind. They were, a lot of the kids I know in, that we work with in the Norfolk school system were behind in the beginning, you know, because good teachers and stuff like that are really hard to find. And you have, you know, you have to, you know, embrace these teachers and, in, in, in that, you know, surrounding. So I think that, I think the family life is, is, is one of the main reasons uh, you have, we have a lot of anxiety. We have ADHD mm-hmm. kids are attention deficit, you know, hyper um, disorder. Um, we have, uh, um, you know, bipolar. A lot of the, a lot of these diagnoses are real, and these kids are suffering from anxiety and a lot of stuff from just the day to day, you know, living. Mm-hmm. And, and some parents might not understand that because they're like, "Oh, when I was coming up, you know, I had to get up, and when the sun rose, and I worked till the sun went down, and I didn't have these issues." But it's different today. Yes, you're right. Um, <laughs> And, you know, let me say that, you know, uh, you know I, I catch myself saying that sometimes <laughs> as well, but we still had issues. We just, we dealt with them in different ways. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of uh, the the plight for these kids the, today with social media and all this stuff uh, saying that, you know, it's okay to, you know, if, the suicide and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm it's not crazy. Saying, I'm not saying that they say it's okay, but I think they cross the line when they, you know, when they, the acceptance of all of this stuff is, is, is greater. Mm-hmm. You know, I think, um, you know, we need to kind of get back to the basics of, you know, love and tenderness and caring in our families. And I think when we do that, we all, uh, you know, we all prosper when it comes to mental health. And there's some things, you know, in mental health that, you you know, you, you cannot, you know, get around. You know, you may need medication. But 
Uh, I notice a lot in our field, a lot of times, uh, these doctors, they, they, they dump medicine on these kids, but they don't follow up with counseling and they don't follow up with, uh, intensive care. You know what I'm saying? Like okay. really paying attention to what's going on in the schools with, you know, and, that, and that's where we come in as an agency. We're, we're working with the school systems. We have uh, our clinicians are in the home mm-hmm. um, so they can, you know, basically see what's going on. And, it, and, and we, and it's, at Crescent, we have a holistic approach. We work with the families as well as, you know, the kids. Um, so because, you know, I could work with a kid all day long, and when they go home, they're right back into an right. whatever environment that's causing a lot of their issues and problems in the first place. If you're just joining us, I'm speaking with Rodney Malone. He is the director of Crescent Counseling and Casework Services located in Virginia Beach. Mm-hmm. And you've got an event coming up, and we want to get to that. But I was thinking about you last week. I think it was last Tuesday when we had that school shooting in Michigan. And I said, I wonder what Rodney would say to the parents that obviously you could see the stress and anguish on their face on the news or whatever. What would you say to the parents and what would you say to the students there at those schools? I mean, because it can happen any school in the United States on any day. So so what what is the message for the parents and and the students? Yeah, you know, it's they you know, a lot of the school systems will probably provide I know they will. Um, you know, a counseling set up for um you know, the families that that are involved and even the kids who, you know, just, just a normal student that's going there. Mm-hmm. So they, they, they would have counseling, uh, set up for them. And, you know, basically, uh, it, it's very, it's, it's tough. It's a very tough, um, right. you know, uh, situation. Uh, we, you know, we live in a society now and, you know, let's face it, it's a violent society and, yeah. You know, we're talking about guns and, you know, it's a big struggle politically on should you have guns, should you not have guns. And, you know, one of my one of my things I like to stress is that, you know, I'm I'm not mad if you make me go through a whole lot to get a gun. I'm not mad about that because I think, you know, um, we need these, you know, rules and regulations set up mm-hmm. to you know, if a person has, you know, has history of mental health illness and problems and domestic violence and just violence, you know, in general, I think that should be a, uh, you know, a, a red flag raise when, you know, we start talking about guns, which that's, you know, kind of a different story. But, you know, you know, grief and loss is part of what we do. And that's basically what. Yeah. You know, we would be doing with that those families, you know, dealing with the grief and loss and, and the anxiety of other kids that went to the school that weren't directly involved, but they are secondarily involved because they, they're there at the school. What advice do you have for persons that they may have adult friends in their lives and their adult friends have been through some childhood trauma, I mean some real trauma, and with their parents? And they want to get it out, Rodney. They they talk to you about it, but it seems as though they talk to you about it and talk to you about it and talk to you about it. And then you say, well, have you seen somebody, you know, who's gone to school, who knows how to handle this? Have you talked to anybody about it? And they say something like, well, I thought about that or whatever. How How does one adult handle that? Because the adult that's listening you know, we may, we're not trained. We don't, we don't know how to do this, but we recognize that this person needs to get this out. So mm-hmm. what, what's a good, what is something good for them to say to lead them to a therapist so they're feeling okay, like, you know what, that's the right thing I should do. I should, I should go see a therapist. Yeah, a lot of times, you know, in our communities, we've, we've kind of shunned uh, getting help. And I think mindset is what we need to be working on now, changing people's mindset Mm -hmm. that counseling is good. I mean, a lot now, a lot of times now, and I'm not going to say that they're all good, but a lot of times people will go to their pastors 
because they've been, you know, or oh, should have been yeah. trained. You know, they should have been trained in grief and loss and counseling and uh, marriage counseling and a lot of different entities of counseling. Um, but I would just simply say, you know, when I encourage people to, to go to counseling, I, I just simply say, hey, give it a shot. Give it a try. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's confidentiality with, with the counselor or therapist. Um, there's no uh, stigma attached to it. And, you know, you, you're able, and, and usually when a person does take that gigantic first step to do that, they, they see almost instantly that, that uh, they're, they can talk to a person and, and get, you know, a trained a train mind. Yeah, a trained mind. help them with some of those issues and stuff that they, you know, that they're dealing with. That's good. And, then it, and when you talked about, uh, you know, problems maybe with, the, with parents and stuff like that, and a lot of it is, you know, uh, they haven't been, they haven't dealt, processed and dealt with these issues uh, in a lot of years. Mm-hmm. And so the first step, really, if you can get someone to go to counseling or whatever, they, 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 you know, that's a big first step. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so as an adult who's not trained and the person who's, um, has experienced trauma and they're reliving it, the best thing you can do is to just continuously encourage them to go get, professional help and it and do do you explain to them it's not that i don't want to help you but i'm not trained in that manner or do you just say you know you, you need to go get some trained help yeah but you know basically it's it's hey you know uh, you know it's it's this, these are my ideas these are my thoughts but um you know okay. i'm not a professional but you know maybe yeah. i'll sit down with you and we can look at some different agencies uh, mm-hmm. that, you know, professionally can help you with whatever issues that you're dealing with. That's and good. then, you know, you just convince people that, they, like you said, you know, I'm not the trained professional, but I can lead you or I will help guide you to someone who can, you know, uh, help you with these issues. Okay. Okay. That might be received. Okay. I got you. Speaking with Rodney Malone, now you are giving back to the community. You are all in the community, and you believe in giving back. Can you tell us about a, an exciting event that you have coming up? Well, yeah, let me talk about the exciting event that I had last week with Thanksgiving. Okay. We we, um, we teamed up with, uh, the well, actually it's the Navy. We teamed up with them uh, for the last three or four years, and uh, we also teamed up with a real estate agent uh, agency out in Chesapeake, and uh, basically we we were able to corral and get you know turkey baskets with the nice. big, big things, and it was really nice. Uh, um, you know, all the fixings and canned corn and, mm-hmm. and green beans and string beans and apples and. Uh, stuffings and and the turkey. So basically, we uh, we loaded up the trucks and we brought them back to the office and 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 all our clinicians came in. You know, uh, uh, my program director Chanel Cummings and my office manager uh, Rosa Batista. We all and, and several of our counselors got together and we we you put everything together and then we just take them out. To our clients in the community, so we did that last uh, last week. Um, like I said, this we we did eighty turkeys this year, um, but we we generally we do a hundred. But I took uh, twenty, and I collaborated with. Um, I, I contacted a a church over in yes. um, Hampton. Yes, and we actually gave them twenty turkeys and. Uh, all the fixings for the, the congregation and people for them to give out over there in Hampton as well. So that was that was last week. Mm-hmm. And starting today, we have our Crescent Counseling, and we're collaborating with uh, 1865 Brewery, which mm-hmm. you know I'm a part of. Yes, and uh, we are we're doing a coat drive. So you can stop by either Crescent Counseling on uh, Rosemont Road. 
and drop your turkey, um, excuse me, turkey, your coat, mm-hmm. <laughs> turkey on my brain. <laughs> you can drop your uh, gently used coat or our new coat in our box and over uh, at 1865 Brewery in Hampton in Phoebus, you can do the same between uh, December 1st and December 15th. And we will be handing those out in the community to the needy families that, you know, for kids and adults to have coats so they won't be cold this winter. So if someone is listening and they're like, gee whiz, I know of a family, or gee whiz, my family needs these coats, do they contact you? Do they have to be on a certain list? Or how does that work exactly? No, they do not. They they don't have to be on a list. They can contact us at Crescent Counseling and Casework Services. And my number here is 757 757- Four three one zero one zero five, um, and uh, they can you know stop by, and when we are uh, give us their information, and we'll deliver a coat to them, or wow. however you know, it's just about communicating with us. That's all. That's really nice. So you're just Mister Altruistic. Al, yeah, did I say that right? Yeah, uh, Mister Altruistic all the way around, huh? <laughs> well, I'm a hey, a. Growing up and being in the community, a lot of people helped me, and I just want to give back. And before you get out of here, let's talk about the brewery, 1865 Brewery. It's doing very well. Yes, ma'am. We're still there, and we're still we're still alive and well. Why, what do you contribute the success of it to? Uh, just the community involvement. Um, we do have an Instagram page and Facebook, and so... We have a calendar where we're doing an open mic every other Wednesday. We have wind down Wednesday every Wednesday, and we uh, for Veterans Day we 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 gave like veterans that came in with ID. They had they were able to get uh, probably fifty percent off on their beer mm-hmm. or coffee or latte or whatever they had. So we're uh, constantly. Um, putting together things for people to come in, at, you know, um, and you know, out of the community, and we, and the community has really supported us. So we're trying to support them back by doing different things. Um, it sounds like putting, you're actually doing it. You're not trying. You're doing it. <laughs> yeah, we, well, you know, we're we're a work in progress, but we're we're putting things together, and and then they're 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 coming, you know, coming alive. Excellent. So. Just to recap, someone might be joining us late. I am speaking with Rodney Malone. He is the director of Crescent Counseling Casework and Services. He has two locations. Uh, one is in the 540 Roanoke yeah. area. Yeah. The other is at 708, 708 South Rosemont Road, Suite 102. That is in Virginia Beach. Uh, also, he's told us about this holiday coat drive that's coming up. It's being presented by Crescent Counseling and 1865 Brewing Company. That is going on now through the 15th of December. So, you know, it's a good time. People have more time off now. So it's a good time to go through the closets and weed out things you don't want and just gently use coats. That's what you want. New coats or gently used coats, right? Yes, ma'am. And um, you're going to recycle them back into the neighborhood. Yeah, the, the gently used ones we will take and we'll clean, get them cleaned up professionally, mm-hmm. and get them ready. And the new coats, you know, we'll just we'll we'll distribute them out, you know, to the first come first serve to the needy families. And last but not least, like he said, you can support him through 1865 Brewing Company. So, Rodney, we are proud of you. We really are. You're doing a great job. It's 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 good to see you doing so well and giving back to the community and and making a difference. Well, thank you so much for the platform to be able to uh, to help people and to get the word out. I really do appreciate it. We do here at Crescent, and we do at 1865 as well. Before you get out of here, leave any uh, social media contacts or telephone numbers that you want to leave. Uh, like I said, the Crescent Counseling number is uh, 757-431-0105. Uh, you can go up 1865 Brewing. We have an Instagram page. We have Facebook. Um, 
And, you know, we have a calendar there. You can check the calendar out to see what events that we're having there. Mm -hmm. Um, We are putting together, uh, like, an acoustic night. and We are putting together a cornhole tournament. We're we're just doing some things that, you know, that we know people kind of like to do. And, you know, to get away from the hustle and bustle of everyday work, you know, your work schedule. So, yeah, come check us out. We're we're um we're there. Sounds wonderful. Again, thank you for being a guest here on Spartan Life Radio. Take care and happy holidays to you. Thank you and happy holidays to you and your family and everybody in the seven five seven. Sounds wonderful. All right, folks, don't you go anywhere because the second guest today, he is just going to be just as compelling and interesting as Rodney Malone. You don't want to miss it. I'm Cheryl Wilkerson. This is Spartan Life Radio. Welcome back to Spartan Life Radio. I'm your host, Cheryl Wilkerson. On this Sunday afternoon, it's so nice out there, but... Speaking of nice, I have a nice guest for you. Spoke to him earlier in the week, and I said, ooh, I've got to get him on Spartan Life Radio. So say welcome to William Bethea. He is the director of bands and assistant professor of music right here at Norfolk State University. How are you doing? I'm doing great, and happy Sunday to you. Good afternoon to everyone. It's yeah. great to be back. Cheryl, you're doing an amazing job, i got to tell you. Well, thank you for those kind words, but you, okay, you have to tell this story that you told us earlier this week on The Morning Show about this wonderful Spartan Legion and where they are headed, and I just want you to tell the whole story because it was it was almost mesmerizing. First of all, where are you headed? Well, we're headed to uh, Pasadena, California, 2023 Tournament of Roses Parade. It's the most prestigious uh, parade in the world, and um, they only select the creme de la creme of the band world. And um, this particular year, which will be next year's Rose Bowl Parade, they only invited nine bands, including international bands, because international groups couldn't come this year because of COVID. It's, you know, we're not all the way out of COVID uh, mm-hmm. yet, so... Uh, You're talking we were one of nine groups selected internationally to participate in this parade. So I just, it still hasn't really sunk in yet. (laughs) And uh, it's amazing. I'm so proud of the kids. Um, And just to kind of walk you through what happened, uh, Miss Sanders, my partner in crime. uh, Not in crime. You didn't say not in crime. Okay. (laughs) That's my partner in crime. Uh (laughs) Uh, uh, Not literally, actually, but... uh, (laughs) Uh, you know, she's a fantastic music educator and performer. A lot of all of us know her from playing in raw jazz and uh, in the symphony and stuff like that on bassoon. She plays both styles, but um, we work very, very well together. We were just sitting around one day, and she suggested, she said, you know, William, we've come a long way with this band program. We should uh, apply for Macy's or the Rose Bowl Parade. Mm-hmm. And at first I was like, eh. But why eh. were you like that? Why, I mean, what was that? Eh? What, what does that I'm, mean? Sarah, that's a great question. I'm going to tell you why. I really, really like to do top-notch work. Okay. And in my mind, Cheryl, we had been improving and we're getting better, but the lesion that I see in my head, y'all haven't even seen yet. Oh, okay. And so, so there's, you know, there's kind of levels to it. You know, we had sort of been charged of rebuilding the band program from 2014 till now. And it's been going great, and we've been progressing well. But I got a band in my head that I want to show the world that, to me, we haven't quite got there yet. And so that's what the, eh, you know, that's something I would really consider once I feel like we've, we've got the group that, um, that I see in my head and the possibilities that, you know, the best that we can, we can be. But well, well, wait so, a minute. What, you know, what happened in 2014 that we need to rebuild? What, what, what was going on? Um, well, 2014, uh, what happened was we've had, well, we had two, what I would consider HBCU Hall of Fame band directors move on. Dr. Sanford, uh, had left, I think in 2011 ish. Mm -hmm. And then Paul Adams, who all consider, uh, the best, uh, uh, HBCU arranger, um, that we have ever seen. And his, his arranging talents go far beyond HBCU world, but I'm just telling you, He's an awesome, awesome, awesome arranger okay. um, of music, and he's just he's got he's got it mastered. And so he stepped away as well in 2014, 
Um, and then at that time, the university had somewhat of low enrollment, um, and uh, we were just sort of in a transition period collectively uh, as a university. That happens, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so our enrollment dropped, and that caused uh, uh, budgets around campus to be readjusted. We lost a lot of money when they did that. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say probably we lost somewhere between four or $500,000 out of the band budget. Oh, my gosh. Uh, I, 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 I don't know what I would have done. I would have been like, oh, my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a tough period. And the university was kind of getting themselves together and uh, getting our enrollment back up, making sure that we – are um, meeting all of the requirements for SACs and all those kind of things. There was a lot going on. And so, um, you know, our numbers in band, we were perennial 230, 40-piece band. We dropped all the way down to, uh, we had like maybe 110 members in 2014. Oh, okay. That's very small. Yeah. Now, yeah, the yeah. quality was still there, mm-hmm. you know, uh, but we were much smaller than people were used to uh, seeing. So, um, you know, we had to roll our sleeves up. Uh, buckle buckle up and uh, get this band program, you know, where we all know that it can be in terms of numbers and quality and all of that. So okay. it was a project, and we needed new uniforms, and we needed new instruments, and uh, we need to get some more band members. So we were working on that since 2014, and every year, and I'm very proud to say this, we increased in quality and numbers every okay. year. Okay. 30 more members, 40 more members, 50 more members, 70 more members. We just kept growing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we checked in this year at 2.30, you know, mm-hmm. so just think where, you know, how far, which way, where you've come from in six years. That's a lot. We've more than doubled the size of the band. So, um, you know, it was uh, uh, kind of a rebuilding thing to get, you know, back where, again, the band I see in my head and the high quality uh, that we can be. And uh, we worked very hard to do that. So when Stephanie mentioned to, um, you know, apply for, those parades, in my mind, let's wait a year or two, you know, because oh, to me, in a year or two, okay. we don't have that monster in here. Uh-huh. But, you know, I, I listened to her, and, you know, because let me tell you, all the fellas out there, listen to me. Fellas out there, you need a strong, intelligent woman next to you. They see things differently, and they keep you on track. Uh, and I'm telling all you guys out there, whether it's at the workplace or in a relationship, value, value, value that opinion of that strong woman. I'm telling you, it can't, it can't be beat. And so I said, Stephanie's probably right about this. So I applied. I chose the Rose Bowl because that one is the most prestigious one. Okay. okay. And uh, if we're going to go for it, Cheryl, we're going to go for it. Okay. Nice, that's right. <laughs> and so I applied for it and I submitted the application um, probably – I don't know, four, five, six months or so before COVID hit. And so, um, and the application was very lengthy. It took me a week to do. Um, wait, wait, they let's stop. My let's, resume. Let's, let's think yeah. about that. Wait a minute. You got an application and the application took you a week to do. So you were just like taking breaks and just like, oh, I'll finish it later. It was that kind of thing. Or was it, okay, I finished that part. Now I've got to get to this part. And it took a week. Yeah. The, the latter. Okay. But what happened was some of the things that they were asking on the report, I had to research. <laughs> oh, right? They okay. wanted to know the history of the school when it comes to, you know, band performances, the past band directors, some of our achievements. Um, you know, they needed videos and pictures of all angles of the band uniform and uh, parade footage, uh, performances. Um, they needed my resume updated. It was just a lot. Mm. And so some of that I had to call some, some band historians, university historians, um, to get some years right, some dates right. And I found out in doing this, or I already knew, but I found out that Norfolk State has a long history mm-hmm. of outstanding achievements, not only throughout the campus, but particularly in band. I mean, there are some marquee performances that kids will probably once in a lifetime will never see again. Um, and uh, like the CBDNA performance by Chief. How about the, um, the, the, the title, HBO uh, championship title fight that Sweet Pete Whitaker had mm-hmm. right there at the Scope Arena? Mm-hmm. The band brought him into that. It's on HBO. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's incredible uh, to be at a title match like that. Right. You know, right. and, and, um, so 
it's just that's just a couple of things, but just a long history. The Honda Battle of the Bands, uh, uh, the Queen Cities, and all the things that we've done. And so, um, you know, it took me a week to put all that together and package it up and send it to them. And you know, then COVID hit, uh, Cheryl. And I was oh. like, "Wow, I'm not, sh- I'm not sure what's going to happen with this application now." I, I started thinking to myself, maybe they're going to push everybody back a year or something. So, I, you know, uh, just gave them time to get all that together. Um, and we just heard back from them uh, this semester. And it was a, roughly a couple of weeks prior to homecoming. I was sitting, um, uh, having some lunch. I think it was at IHOP, matter of fact. I was having some lunch mm-hmm. about 12 noon, and they called me. And uh, when I picked up the phone, the lady said, hello, this is Jeanette. Wait a minute. Uh, when you looked at the phone, did you know who was calling? I did not. Okay, I just saw okay. the strange number, and it said California or something on it. Mm-hmm. And I had no idea what it was, but I just picked it up. And, um, and she said, hey, this is Jeanette. Uh, I'm on the committee for the Tournament of Roses Parade. How are you doing today? I said, I'm great. She says, well, the committee's got some questions to ask you, but, you know, they're all not here right now. But they will be here 5 <laughs> o'clock your time, 2 o'clock my time. Can we call you back and ask you some questions about your application? I said, Sure. I said, sure, I'll be there. So but when what I was home, going I said, through your head? Great. Huh? What, 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 do you th- what did you think that call was all about? I think they're interested in us, but maybe there's something on the application that wasn't clear. Okay. Or something, additional information may okay. be needed. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I was thinking. So uh, I told Stephanie, I said, Stephanie, uh, I got a call from the Rose Spray. She said, I bet you we made it. <laughs> <laughs> That women, I'm telling you, that women's intuition, but I bet you, I said, hmm, I wonder if there was something wrong with the application or they needed additional information, what they're saying. So 5 o'clock, I was right there at my desk, and sure enough, they called about 5.02 my time, 2.02 their time. And um, Jeanette said, hey, William, I said, hey, how are you doing? She said, let me first introduce you to everybody at the committee. They were all there in the room. Wow. And uh, there's a committee made up of, of experts, um, you know, and people with experience to select these bands. And what they, you know, look sound that they're looking for, the uh, look that they're looking for, and all of that. And so um, I, they introduced me to everybody that was in the room on the phone. And then Jeanette said, well, the question that we have about your application, she said, are you and the Spartan Legion Marching Band available to do the 2023 mm. Tournament of Rose Parade? And I dropped the phone and just screamed. Mm. And I, I just have. screamed. Oh, no, you were at your desk then. <laughs> no, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm in yeah. my office at this point. Yeah. yeah. I just dropped the phone. I was like, yeah, we made it. We made it. Wow. I just kept, I'm serious. They must have been waiting for me to pick that phone up for about five minutes. I'm just walking around my office going, wow. <laughs> really? Is this real? So by, you know, five, six minutes later, I pick up the phone. They're all just dying laughing, by the way. All right. They are. They're just dying. I can hear everybody laughing on the phone. And they said, but Mr. Bethea, congratulations. We are honored to have your band come to perform in a parade. We can't wait. Oh, nice. We're very proud of what you guys have been doing with the band program. They said that. Um, wow. And they said, uh, we know it's been tough with COVID, and you guys have been maintaining and holding that program together. We can't wait to see you. Congratulations. And I'll bet your next call was to Dr. Javon Adams Gaston. I'm just guessing. <laughs> Hey, let me tell you something. She is awesome. Yes. I I love Dr. J. I really do. Uh, And you're right. Um, (laughs) I didn't call her directly. There's a protocol I have to do. I have to call, you know. That's right. We do things in order. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've got to call the vice president's office, and then they go up from there. Uh, Because I knew it was going to be an expensive trip. And while I did accept it tentatively on the phone with the committee, I said, yes, we're available. Um, You know, they understood that I needed to get that approved from the uh, president and stuff. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, <laughs> I, I called. That was definitely my next call. And um, I talked to uh, it was Dr. Fitzgerald, who is uh, who I report to to get to Dr. Brown, to get to Dr. J. Um, although all those people, you know, all those administrators would speak to me directly if need be. But I just, you know, there's a protocol. You were probably screaming like you up. were screaming, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That is awesome. So I called, I called Dr. Fitzgerald, man, and we were both on the phone screaming and so excited. One of nine bands. Wow. And um, so, and you're talking about hundreds of millions yes. that will be watching this. And um, 
So that 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 uh, that short time that Norfolk State comes across that screen and they talk about us and our band and our university is going to be priceless uh, and more marketing that we have ever seen in that short amount of time. And you know, um, so, I, I want to say this. Uh, Recently, uh, our neighbors, Hampton University, they were featured in Macy's. And, you know, I just loved being on social media and seeing all the love they were getting from all the different HBCUs. It didn't matter where people went to school. They were all showing Hampton University love. And I think we're going to get that back threefold, right? Yeah. Oh, yes, ma'am. And I was one of them, too. I'm not a big social media guy. Like, all the people around me keep me up with what's going on social media. But... Uh, I know Dr. Jones over at Hampton uh, uh, fairly well, um, and um, we all know each other. And so while that parade was going on, I was so proud of them. They looked right, good. Right. They sounded good. They mm-hmm. added a different flavor to the parade. The mm-hmm. folks enjoyed it. They were dancing out there. And um, I just thought their whole presentation was really good. So um, I texted him, you know, uh, right after I saw it, knew that he would get it when he, you know, got back to the bus or wherever. And he sure texted me right back. And I said, man, look, the band sounded great, looked great, fantastic job. So I'm really proud of you because he's, you know, he's upcoming. Um, he's been in the, in the game a little while, but mm-hmm. this is, I think, I think this is his first uh, band director's job where he's in gotcha. charge. He's a young guy, mm-hmm. very disciplined, military background, and I knew he was going to do great. Um, reminds me of myself when I was younger. Let I was me very ask- aggressive. Mm-hmm. Huh? I was going to yeah, say, I got two more questions for you. Uh-huh. How did you tell what was what were the what was the scenario when you told the legion themselves and what was the scenario when you told the world? All right. Um so telling the band um Okay, so let me back up. So when they told me uh-huh. that we were selected uh, they told me that I could not tell anybody other than my superiors right. to get approval because they don't want the word out until they announce who the bands are. Um, and I said, okay, that's cool. But then the following week, they called me and they said, uh, Ms. Bethere, we realize this weekend is your homecoming. Like the Rose Parade Committee knows everything about you. Yeah, okay? they do. They do. And, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how did you know that? I didn't tell you. But um, they said this would be a great time for you to announce it to your community to start your fundraising efforts. So we're going to give you permission to go ahead and, and announce that you guys are going. And they said, we'll send you some of the ways past Rose bands have announced it to their fans and to their band. So they sent me a few video examples. And um, the one I liked was announcing it at the game right before halftime. And so what they did is the chairman, not the chairman, excuse me, the president of the Tournament of Roses Parade, she made a private video. Wow to send to me so that I could give it to the technicians to play right before halftime. And so the band did not know. I did tell the drum majors, all right, because I didn't want the drum majors to be freaked out. They're Mm -hmm. trying to get the band ready to perform. Mm -hmm. And I did tell them like the day before. Mm -hmm. And they just looked at each other in my office and just (laughs) went bananas. Well, let's give them a name. Let's name them. Let's call them out, please. (laughs) <laughs> that's Mr. Spartan, that's Jonathan Lee yes. out there, and Captain So, Aaron Boone. Uh, Jonathan Lee is for right here. Yes, his dad uh, is Hampton so proud Road. of him, yes. Mm-hmm. He pumps you yeah. all up all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and Aaron Boone's up there in Rip from Richmond. So, right. look, they were happy, but I, I had to swear them to secrecy, Cheryl. You can't tell any of the students because we're going to surprise the band tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And so they kept it a secret, and so the band is coming for homecoming, getting ready to set up. And then the announcer says to the audience, ladies and gentlemen, please focus your attention to the Jumatron. We have a special message from Pasadena, California. And everybody, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so they look up there, and the president for the Tournament of Roses is there. And she said something to the effect of, of hello, my name is, uh, I can't remember her name because it's the new president for next year. Uh, my name is uh, so-and-so, and I am the president of the 2023 Tournament of Roses Parade. And she said, it is my pleasure and great honor to invite Norfolk State University Spartan Legion Marching Band to participate in the 2023 mm. Rose Parade. Congratulations. And the crowd went crazy. It, is, it gives kid, you goosebumps hearing it now. Yeah, it, they went crazy. And, Cheryl, we had, uh, we had bought like five dozen roses to give to the drum majors and the section leaders uh, of throughout the band. And they held the roses in the air. We're all jumping around, and then we went on to perform at halftime. It was it was great. 
It was uh, great. I was there. It was just amazing. <laughs> and so tell us about some of the expenses that you now have to think about that you have to cover. Explain it as at, in as much detail as you can about the expenses. Yeah, well, it's going to be uh, extremely expensive for us, other than the international bands. I don't know if there's a band in the country that's got to travel as far as, far as we do, right? We got to fly 240 kids and 20 staff, right, from mm-hmm. the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific. Mm-hmm. All right? So uh, that is going to be extremely expensive. And you're traveling during the New Year's, what, uh, holiday break, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. So, and so that's going to be hundreds of thousands of dollars just in plane tickets. And uh, we've got to move all that equipment as well. Um, I'm sure there will be some charges for the excessive weight and and the amount of equipment that we have, Mm -hmm. uh, plus the luggage of the kids. And when we get to Pasadena, we've got to be there for five days, five nights, because the Rose uh, uh, Parade Committee, they have events for you to play at. When you're a Rose Bowl band, that's a prestigious thing. So they've got gigs for us to play at Disney. They got gigs for us to play at some events called Band Fest. And I don't know what that is yet, but I think that's <laughs> so a group of the Rose. Out, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Rose bands, I think, get together and play concerts or something. Uh, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll find out here shortly. Uh, but they have performances. And then there's training for the parade. There's conferences that we have to go to, to as band directors. They got events for the kids. So it's a lot. You have to be there five days and five nights. So we got 260. Uh, approximately, tra- flying to uh, from Norfolk to L.A. to go to get to Pasadena. Then we got needing hotels, and we're going to have to feed the kids for five days and five nights. So that is going to be extremely expensive. My guess, six seven hundred thousand dollars for that amount of people. Wow! Um, and and, and, yeah, and, and, and so and, earlier this week, we did have a day of giving for the band. But tell the people listening now. And by the way, if you just tuned us in, I'm speaking with uh, William Bethea. He's the director of bands and the assistant professor of music here at Norfolk State University. And it's so exciting that our band is going uh, to the Rose Bowl. But tell people how they can chip in. Yeah, folks, and 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 for all of you listening out there, please, please listen to me and hear me clearly. Uh, we always, and and not only as an African American community, but just as people, we always yearn for opportunities like this, and we always ask questions. Well, why can't our school do the Rose Parade, or why can't our school do this, or why can't we do this or do that? And this is one of those where once in a lifetime opportunities where we are going to be on a stage equal with every school and band in the country and world. All right, so this is a great opportunity. So now it's kind of time to stop wishing because we're here now. This is an event that we can all be proud of. Everybody in the Hampton Roads, everybody in the state of VA. Uh, we all can be proud. HBCUs are going to be proud. I already know that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We're, and, and this is huge. So now it's, we're past the why can't we. We're here. So now we've got to support it. We have got to support it. You know, Dr. J approved for us to go to this event, knowing that we could probably be okay with raising the money and having faith in me, faith in our our, our uh, folks at the foundation or the NSU's campus that we can raise this money. And we always want these opportunities. And now we have to support it like the other schools have done. All right? Okay. We have to do it. And okay. we can do this collectively. Okay. And. And, and so what we need to do, and the fundraising has already kicked off. It kicked off on, on Tuesday mm-hmm. and uh, did a great job. A lot of people chipped in. I think we raised something like uh, 95000 I think, okay. in a day. Good. Uh, so people are chipping in, but we, you know, $700,000 uh, is a long ways away. <laughs> <laughs> but we can do so it. We, got, mm-hmm. we, we need people to chip in, man, if you've got it and if, you, if, 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 if you're able. And there's a couple of ways that you can do it. Um, you can go to www.nsu.edu forward slash give now, and uh, it'll show up and navigate you through it. Or you can text Road to Pasadena to 41444. And that's a real easy way to do it right on your cell phone. And everything is secure. Your accounts will be secure and protected. But you can, again, text Road to Pasadena um, 
all next to each other, no spaces, and text that to 41444, and then the app will come up, and you can donate that way. And for all of you that have donated from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And this is going to be a once-in-a-life opportunity for the kids, um, and that's who I'm most excited for, are the students and the experience that they're going to get uh, with this, and they're going to feel like superstars out there in Pasadena. And uh, then I'm proud that uh, our university community and staff and alumni can share this with us. A lot of people have already brought tickets. They're going to be down there with us. Um, you know, we're going to have a crowd out there, mm-hmm. you know, when we, when we go through the parade run. I'm so excited about that. And issue travels well when it comes to big events. And the third reason why I'm proud is that Stephanie Sanders and William Bethea are going to leave a mark. And we've already left some uh, uh, here um, uh, anyway, but we're going to leave a unprecedented mark in the history of the Norfolk State University school and band program that years from now people will always say we did the Rose Bowl. And so um, it's a lot, and this is going to mean a lot. And some of you listening out there, you know, may not be um, really excited about, about the band, you know, but you are about Norfolk State athletics or you are about Norfolk State academics. You know, that's fine, too, because this is going to affect all of us. Yeah. For that time, I run across that TV screen, and hundreds of millions of people are watching. Mm-hmm. How many millions of people are going to say, Norfolk State, I've never heard of that school, and mm-hmm. look it up. Yeah, yeah. You know, how many, how many students are going to be, oh, i never heard of that college, let me see what mm-hmm. they got. Oh, they got nursing, biology. I'm in Oklahoma. I'm going to take it, a look at that. It's like what happens when we go to the second round of the NCAAs and everything, but it's magnified because it's this parade that the entire family is watching with the sporting events you know you're getting all the sports lovers for sure and maybe some people that are sitting there that don't particularly love sports but they're watching it with their you know significant other but everybody loves the parade yeah so you're going to get those eyeballs we are going to get those eyeballs yeah so i'm excited yeah cheryl you just said it and so i think whatever heart of Norfolk State University you are a fan of or involved with. Support the band going because it's going to help all of us. Yeah, it will. I expect, I expect some enrollment to, to go up. I expect some students that say, well, I saw your band in the Rose Bowl Parade. I looked up the university. Wow, you guys got a great business program. Yeah, great and theater I want to program. Away, yeah, it, I, and it, I want to get away from home. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's away from home. <laughs> William the Fair, yeah. we are running out of time, but you have nailed that. You have certainly nailed that. I just don't know what to say. Other than I do want you to keep us abreast of how the fundraising is going and, you know, what you're hearing from the uh, the roses the tournament of roses as we get closer and closer because we are interested and we do want to support so please don't be a stranger but thank you so much for letting us all know today about this exciting news and before you go once again tell people how they can get yes ma'am you guys can go to www.nsu.edu forward slash give now all right and the app will come up and then you can navigate very easy or Uh, the way I gave, which is, to me, simpler, you can text Road to Pasadena, all right? No spaces, just Road to Pasadena, R-O-A-D-T-O-P-A-S-A-D-E-N-A, and text that to 41444, and you can navigate the app right on your phone. It's very secure, set up by the foundation uh, at Norfolk State University, so it's safe. And Cheryl, let me tell you, at least 30 minutes went by so fast I could talk to you for hours, okay? You got to call me back, Cheryl. Get me on the phone. I need more time, Cheryl, okay? I got stories for days for you, girl, all right? Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today. We will be in touch again, ladies and gentlemen. That was the voice of William Bethea. He's the director of bands and the assistant professor of music right here at Norfolk State University. We are so excited for this March in Spartan Legion. I'm thankful that you all tuned in today. Look, have a nice rest of your Sunday. Spartan Life Radio will be back next week. I'm Cheryl Wilkerson. I love you. Take care. Bye-bye.